Hey everybody, one that always bored, never boring. Halloween is fast approaching, and while I don't want to give you the heebie-jeebies and make it the worst Halloween ever, I did think it would be a good idea to introduce a few videos that had a spooky theme. Fortunately, this idea coincided with me recently completing the painting on my Hero Quest restoration project. I will be moving on to Space Crusade shortly, but before I got to that, I thought I'd try and get a few other little painting projects out of the way first, and one of those is painting up Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. So I thought I would do a quick video on painting the mummy. I have done videos on painting mummies in the past. I actually painted mummies for the Hero Quest restoration project, but I'm going to be using a different technique here. I'm trying to get a slightly inkier, scratchier, more line drawn approach to this mummy. I'm not a great painter and it probably won't turn out how I have it envisioned in my mind, but let's give it a go. To start with, I have spray undercoated this miniature with necrotic flesh from Army Painter. So we have a light putrid green color to work from. And then I'm getting some skeleton bone also from Army Painter and I'm adding in a lot of Lamian medium. So it's almost a glaze. And what I'm doing is I'm going to apply this over the top of the miniature in a very thin coat, almost a patchy coat, because I want little bits of that necrotic flesh to show through in certain areas, but not everywhere. I want a slightly patchy look. And I'm going to follow the lines of the bandages with this coat. And that will be the same for all the other coats too. I'm then going to do a wash over the whole miniature of Seraphim Sepia. Seraphim Sepia is a yellowy brown color, which works well for things like rotting bandages. And I'm not going to go too heavy with this coat. There's going to be a lot of other washes going on this miniature as well. But I want it to go into all of the recesses, provide that recess shading, and also adjust the colour of the skeleton bone. I want it to be more yellowy, more like ageing parchment. But once that's dry, I'm going back to my mix of Lamian medium and skeleton bone. And I'm going to apply another coat of this over the top of the miniature, but I'm going to be focusing on the raised parts of the bandages, leaving the recess shading. And again, I'm trying to get a slightly patchy finish here, so I don't want to have a nice solid coat of this over everything. I want it so that in certain places the Seraphim Sepia shows through more than it does in other areas. And we're going to gradually continue building up this process. I'm now going to use Reichland Flesh Shade, and very, very lightly I'm going to apply this to certain areas of the miniature. Again, focusing on the recesses a little bit, but I want it to spill a little bit onto the bandages in certain areas, but not too much. You can see there's hardly any of the wash on my brush, and I'm being very delicate in how I apply it. I'm really just providing different shades, different tones, different hues in the miniature, different variations in the coloration to add interest and to make it look aged. And this is something you just have to do by eye and stop when you're happy. And then it is back to the skeleton bone again with the Lamian medium, the same mix as before. And I'm going over the tops of the bandages again. So I'm gradually going backwards and forwards, building up the layers of color, leaving different patches of darker shades showing through and then focusing highlights on the very tops of the bandages. And as before, I don't want to hit every single bandage. I don't want to hit every single raised surface. I want it to be patchy. And then it is time for Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to do two things with this. First of all, I'm going to apply it quite heavily to the hands and the feet to make it look like he's been walking around in the dirt and pawing through dirt. And then I'm going to switch to a very fine brush and I'm just going to line it into some of the creases of the bandages for some really heavy recess shading on certain parts of the miniature. And then it is back to that skeleton bone once more, again with the Lamian medium. We want it to be thin and we want it to be like a glaze every single time it goes on. And each time we go back to it, we are being more and more precise. You can see I'm using a very fine detail brush at this point, And I really am just picking out very minor edges and very small areas to pick out with highlights. And that will finish the mummy itself so we can move on to doing the base. And for a desert themed miniature, the obvious thing to do would be to put down some PVA glue, put down some sand and then paint that. But I'm going to do something slightly different here. I'm starting with some Astro Granite texture paint. And I'm going to apply this over the whole base. Obviously it's not going to look quite right, this mummy on a grey base. But we are going to do something about that in a moment. The Astro Granite is just providing a base coat of colour and a rough texture to work from. And then we're going to switch to Zandri Dust and I'm going to thin this down a lot and I'm going to apply one thin coat over the Astro Granite. As with the mummy itself, this is going to be patchy. In certain areas I want a little bit of the Astro Granite to show through, in other areas I don't want it to show so much. I want an inconsistent tone. 
And then when that's completely dry, I'm going to put a thin down wash of Seraphim Sepia over the top of that. That's going to pick out all those rough textures and also make everything look a little bit sandier. And then when that is dry, I'm going back to Zandri Dust and I'm going to do a light dry brush over the top of the rough areas. Again, just building up those layers of textures and details. And then I'm going to do a very final highlight with a Screaming Skull dry brush. This is an incredibly light brush, almost nothing at all, and you can leave it off if you really want to. With that done, the base is finished except for applying Steel Legion Drab around the outside of the base. Normally I use Abaddon Black around the rings of the bases, but for this set I'm going to use the Steel Legion Drab instead. And here's the miniature all finished. And I'm pretty happy with how that has turned out. It has a sort of rough, patchy, dirty look to it. It has the inconsistencies in the tones and shades that I wanted. The different layers of colouring are showing through in different areas and it has a mottled, interesting look, so I'm happy with that. And that's it for this mummy. There are just four heroes in the Curse of the Mummy's Tomb box. I'm hoping to get through all of those in the next couple of weeks. But that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.